Thank you. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah, so um, my background's in physics. Um, I've been, it's weird to hear myself as well. Um, so yeah, you know I'm in physics because physics just came out of physics. So there you go. Um, so platformers, uh, something that a lot of people make, especially in game jams. It's quite a, like a, an entry level kind of thing that a lot of people can do. And I like to liken it to sort of drum and bass and house music in that anyone can make it, but it'll just be mainly really bad. And the only thing that makes it good is, is good execution. So pretty much I'm going to show you how to do that, how to execute a good platformer. Um, there's kind of two ways you can really make a platformer good. One way is to make it look really cool, and you can do loads of visual effects. And there's a couple of talks that I'd recommend for that. There's one... Uh, JW's Art of Screen Shake, and there's one called Juicer or Loser. But if, you're, if you just want to make a game feel good and play good, um, this, this is going to help you with that. Because to me, a good platformer, even if you've just got a square on the screen and you've got no graphics, like it should be able to feel good. And a lot of people fundamentally get this wrong with platformers. Um, so these, these are my little floating notes around here. So we're going to talk about homemade engines. So there's this common misconception that um, a good platformer needs to have a homemade engine, like Meat Boy and stuff like that. A lot of people choose to make their own engine. And it's really not about that at all. Like ho homemade engines, if, if you want to do it, you can. Um, but my personal take on it is that someday you're going to die and... You've, you've got a small amount of time on the planet and you probably don't want to spend it making your own engine when there's other engines that exist that do everything you want them to do. Um, especially if, you, if you're going to move into porting onto PlayStation or Xbox and stuff like that, if you're working in Unity, it's going to just work. So it's going to take so much of that effort off you. So you, can, you should really you just use the engine you're happy in. You can use Game Maker, you can use anything. You've just got to make sure that you get the physics right, and, and that'll work fine. So, so we're currently in Unity. Um, we're using rigid bodies, um, just because their collision system's really good. Uh, I don't personally want to write a collision system because this one works fantastically. Like Things crash into each other, the data passes fine. Um, people like to write their own systems where they raycast and they send lasers out and crash into things and it's like uh, approximating where you are. It, it works, but to me it doesn't work well. Um, so a better question is why not use Unity? And that's a good question. And th there is a big reason why you wouldn't want to use Unity to make a platformer. And that's the, the collision engine uses box 2D and it kind of just makes it up. So if you see this number up here, uh, that's, if you read it, it says 894 at the end. That's my height right now. And if I jump, it says 909 now. But I'm at the same height, right? And if I jump here, 894, 909. So the, the game, if, if I'm on the top of an edge here, the game thinks I'm at a different height than when I'm here. And it's just, it's kind of all just made up. Like floating, floating points um, store a certain number of digits. And it's just going to approximate based off, off what it's guessing. So if, you, if I run around on this surface, this is the surface I've fixed, then you see my run cycle works fine. Everything's fine. If I run on these, these are made of box colliders, right? I, I'm just constantly colliding. And there, look, I've completely stopped. I'm holding right, and, and I'm, I'm crashing against the floor. Um, if I jump... I'm still crashing against the floor. The only way to not is to go left and right again. Right. So you don't want to use box colliders. Um, there is a fix. And if, if you don't want to spend loads of time, uh, if, if you just want to make like a neat little nifty platformer, and you don't want to worry about some huge system, you can put a circle collider underneath your character. So if you see here, down here, the moonwalking bear, um, that's... He's, I don't know if you can see this, but there's a, there's a sphere here. That's his circle collider. So he's got, he's got a box round mainly, and then he's got a circle around his feet. And that fixes it, but it's, it's not a perfect solution. And the talk's called Perfecting Platformer Physics. It's not hacking together mediocre solutions. So um, <laughs> we're going 
we're going to do it properly. And the way we're going to do it, um, I'm going to fly back, which is going to take me a while, but uh, you, you can see in this area here, which is better lit, um, you've got this thing is an edge collider. It's not made of boxes. Even though this whole thing is made of squares, these, this is one line collider. And so you've got to, you should get the engine to draw lines from every corner point to every corner rather than drawing boxes between them. Um, and then instead of getting this behavior where you and, and crash into things, uh, it'll work. But the problem is, the code is a pain. Um, there's my code. My code isn't well written, but you kind of get the point. Um, you, you feel free to take notes. There's going to be a short quiz on this after. No, but uh, like, if, if you want, if you want to slow down the video afterwards and steal my code, feel free. Uh, it's not very good code, but but it is an undertaking. You're going to have to. Or I mean, you could come up with, you could write your own system where you add the. It's going to be a pain, right? So that, that's that's why not Unity, okay? But I still think that any system you're going to use, you're going to have to tweak it to work with what you've got. So the circle solution will work for a lot of you. Um, it, the, the main thing is if, you, if you're on the top of an edge and you slide up the edge, if you've got circle feet, you're going to slide off. Like you're not going to, like Mario and Mega Man, every, everyone has box colliders and people are used to that. So I think boxes work a lot better and, and circles are a bit of a hack. So I, I personally wouldn't use it, but if you, for your jam games, go for it. Um, so this came out of a jam. This is, he, he said before it was um, Ludum Dare 28. Um, it won the innovation category. But it felt terrible. Um, so the, 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 the point of the game actually is that when you die, your bodies stay behind and you can jump on your dead bodies and use them to get ahead. And it's never necessary to die, but each death makes the game slightly easier. But the jam version was networked and everyone could play together. And you could leave messages about, like, to each other. And one of the messages was, fuck this shitty, slippery game. And uh, it's fair enough, it was kind of true. So I was like, uh, I, could, I could do better. But Unity 2D had just come out. Um, it was sort of December 2013. So, so Unity 2D just launched. And I was, I'd never done a platformer. But um, my degree's in physics, so I was like, I can do physics. So I kind of just wrote it. And it, it was right. It just, the values are wrong. So this is how it originally looked. with It's amazing art. And I didn't even do that art. That was my house. That's better than my art. That was my housemate's art. So it shows how bad I am. But either way, like, these, these are sliders. And so I could tweak them and grab them and move them and get the values to what I wanted them to be. And that's kind of the best way to do it, in my opinion. Um, I don't really see a good way of doing anything else, actually. Um, so if we're going to do that, we need to figure out what values we need to change. So here's our values. So the top three um, are fixed to your rigid body. So mass doesn't really matter. Um, keep it low but keep it reasonable. Just use, to be honest, just use one. But mass, you, you can use Unity's mass system, and that won't bother you. Drag, I wish I didn't use Unity's drag system, but I did, and I'll come, I'll come back to that later. The problem is moving platforms are an absolute nightmare, and oh man, I wish I'd used, I wish I'd done my own drag. But the, the, my whole game's designed around their drag system and I can't replicate it perfectly anymore and the game's like, so I can't go to my own drag. But you, you, can, you can get away with using those things. Gravity scale, you can use that gravity. But these are, these are the variables that you're going to want in every, every platformer. So speed mod, how, how fast you run, base jump strength, and we'll go to the difference between normal jump strength and base jump strength soon. Uh, the wall jumping variables. And then these, yeah, th these are sort of for if you want a better platformer, but you don't need them. These things are, you don't set these, you, we're going to change them. So, also, sorry about the variable names. Like, I used to be really bad at code because I self taught coding, so they don't use camel case. Um, sorry, not sorry. But, yeah, so we've, the, the main thing is, 
people, I see this problem a lot. People use velocity-based force controls. Um, I mean, character controls. And I personally think that's terrible. Um, there's, there's no right answer, but that one's wrong. Um, so this is, this is force-based movement. Right, this is velocity-based movement. So if you see when I move a force, and sorry about that text, whatever, um, the, the, like, if, I, if I tap slightly, I run and I come to a slow hole. And if I run, then I'm not instantly at full speed. I kind of gradually get to a good speed. Right? But if I use velocity-based controls, I, I just, I'm like a robot. Like, it, it, it's not natural. It doesn't feel good. Um, now, if you're adding to a velocity, you are using force-based controls. So that's the same thing. But um, if you're setting your velocities, it's, it's just going to feel wrong. And one way it's definitely going to feel wrong later is when we've got wall jumping. So if I wall jump, I can add a force away from the wall that pushes you away. But if we've got velocity-based controls, it's going to do that. Like You're just going to be on the wall, so you can... It's, it's stupid. Don't, don't do... Don't do velocity-based controls. Just stop it. OK, so <laughs> here's, here's how to do it. Right? This is the code. You can copy and put that in your script. Right? So, so you're just going to take your rigid body, and you're going to add speed mod. So that's the first variable we're talking about, how, how fast you move. And you'll tweak that to whatever you want, uh, times the unfortunately named whore axis, which is <laughs> that's, um, how, how much you're moving this down times your mass. Because the main thing is, if you, if you change your mass later, you want the controls to act the same. So you're, if you times the, the force by the mass, you cancel the mass out and you just get acceleration. So this is, this is adding an acceleration, really, not a force. Okay. Um, so if you add that in fixed update in Unity, then it will run every step and you'll constantly move like and th and that gets you your sideways movement. However, it won't get movement like this, it'll get movement like this. So see this bear down here who's a bit crazy. Um the problem is if you if you keep adding force to something, it's gonna speed up forever. Um it's Newton's first law. Like if you like if just adding force will make something increase in acceleration repeatedly. Um until you run at the speed of light. So, th I mean, this guy's just going to moonwalk forever. So, the, the way you can solve this, there's two ways of solving this. And there's one traditional way people use, like, this is even used in Mega Man, which is bad, bad, bad Capcom. But the, um, the, what they did was they just said, uh, if you're above, like, 18, then it's 18. Like, so if you, if you run past a certain amount, then it's like, yeah, that's, that's 18 now. Um, so, we're going to use drag. And I would recommend you write your own drag in retrospect, but you can use their drag. Um, so when I'm running sideways, instead of, like, when, when I get to my terminal velocity sideways, I'll go up and I'll sort of smooth off uh, at a nice speed. So I won't just suddenly be running and accelerating and then I stop at a max speed. Um, so you kind of need to... When, when, I'm, when I'm falling sideways, that's pretty much what it is. Like, if you think of a skydiver, um, eventually they reach their fastest point, their terminal velocity. That's what's happening when you press right. You are falling at the fastest speed you can possibly fall. Um, and, and it gets this, this motion. So, yeah. <laughs> and the, the problem with that is then, um, that you start to fall really slow because you've got so much drag. He's, he's basically covered in air all over and it's attacking him and just in his face. It's like he's in 100 meter per second winds all the time in every direction. So, and when you jump, you fly. So the solution to that is to just use huge gravity. Um, so if you have like, say 20 times Earth's gravity, that's a decent amount. So yeah, there, we're kind of jumping around now. Um, so now to tackle jumping. Jumping is something, th this is the, if you take one thing away from this, jumping, like get it right. Um, the, the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to, I'm just going to slow it down because I talk fast as well, but th this is, um, f for those of you who know how to make stuff hit each other, that's fine, you can ignore this bit. But for those of you who don't know 
I, I see a lot of the time students especially don't know how to know when you can jump. Like, you can jump when you're on the floor, right? But how do you know that you're, like, how do you keep that you're on the floor? So in Unity, the way to do this is you have this function, on collision enter, and it passes hit, right? So if you write that line of code, you will get this variable called hit. And this, this whole thing, if he's landed on a slope, that is a collision, okay? So his hit box here, you see this pink square and this pink square. These are the hit boxes, and this is the contact point, right? And this variable contains the contacts. So if we grab the zero of contact, like the, the first one, or we can take all of them and check them, uh, then we can see where he's hit whatever he's hit. And we can see the normal of that contact. So in the normal, if, you, if you're not aware, is um, if, if I collide with this right, then my normal is that way. If I collide with this up, my normal is that way. So normal is away from the thing you're hitting. That's tangent. That's normal. OK, so these are all normals. So we can grab the normal, and we want to see where, like, we're only interested in the y value of the normal. Because if I, if I land the floor, we want to see that the, the normal is pointing up. So we need to see how big the y value is. So we can grab the dot y. So if you've got this whole thing, you've got hit dot contacts of zero dot normal dot y, right? And if that value is above a certain amount, you're grounded. That means you've hit the ground. So I've, I've put it as 0 0.1 there, but you can do... 0.5 or, or like this, this one, this would be a normal of 0.6 because it's 3 by 5. And 45 degrees, that's 0.5. So at some point you're going to say, okay, that's hitting the ground. But if it's kind of like a slope like that, you probably don't want to say they've hit the ground. So you, you figure out some sensible value. I, I think I actually use 0.1, but I use squares, so it doesn't matter for me. But 0.5 should be all right. Right, so that, this is your function. That will make it so that your game knows that you are on the floor. And that might sound simple to some of you, but like, to some people, that really goes over their head. But um, yeah. So when you're on the floor, you need to now get in the air. And one common thing I see is people don't know how to make you jump. Like, this, is, this is actually a really hard topic. I've never actually seen it done right. Um, there's kind of two ways people do it. One way is really wrong. Um, so you'll see this in game jams a lot. People will say, when you press A, add a force, and that's it. So they just, you press A, and it goes, dunk. And it doesn't matter if you press A for a long time, or a short time, or a tiny time. Um, they, they will just go up in the air and come down. And that's a terrible, terrible, terrible way of doing it. Um, it, it won't make a natural nice arc. And other people, like, smooth to a parabola. And that's also not a very nice way of doing it. Um, I don't actually know how other people do this, but I've, I've, seen, I've seen other people do it strange ways. This is just the way that I thought to do it, and it works great. Like, if, if I tap a tiny amount, the, the game seems to already know in advance that I was only going to jump a tiny amount. If I jump a huge amount, I get a nice smooth arc. If I jump half... I get a smooth arc. Regardless of how high I jump, it's smooth. Right? And the way I do that is, right, so he's, he's, not, he's not on the toilet. He's, he's about to jump. Right? So, if, so I'm, I'm on PlayStation, so I use a PlayStation controller. But so, so X is the jump button, right? So if X isn't down and you're grounded, which we established before, you've hit the ground and you, you press X, then X is now going to be down. You're not grounded anymore, and we're going to add the base jump strength onto your jump. So that was the first jump variable. So this is, this is the amount that if you tap a tiny, tiny amount, you are going to jump your base jump strength. So that, that's, like, um, that's like my base jump. Okay. But then every frame from then on is going to add on some stuff. And this is where it's going to get a bit heavy. And I hope you all know trigonometry, but if you don't, it's fine. So <laughs> this, is, um, this is a cos wave, and cos waves start at 1, okay, and they go down. So if you think about it, when we start a jump, 
We want to add the most force at the beginning and then have a little bit of force at the top. So we're only interested in this first 90 degrees. We're interested from when it's 1 to when it's 0. We can add that force on. So what happens is we have this thing called jump boost. And this is just my patented way of doing it. Feel free to steal it. But it works really well. So every single frame, uh, from the second you press jump, jump boost is set to zero when you jump. Then one is added to it every single frame. And then we take the cos value of that times some angular velocity that you can choose. But I suggest something slow. Um, and then if, if that value is less than zero, that means that we're past this section up to here. I'm not sure if you can see that because it's really not a good color and I don't know why I chose that. But <laughs> like, you, can, you can see there we've hit 90. right? As soon as we hit 90, so as soon as this factor is less than zero, we've reached the apex. So apex, for, if you don't know, is, is the top of your jump, like the height. This is the apex. right? So the, at that point, we stop adding force. Like the jump's over. Um, but otherwise, we constantly add the jump strength times this factor. So at the, at the very beginning, we're adding the jump strength on its own. By the end, we're adding nothing. In the middle, we're adding like half the jump strength. OK, and that ends up with this nice arc. Um, that's, that's really, if, if you can pull that off, like, your game will feel much, much, much better. And that, that's literally like, that's it. If you type that code into the game, in fixed update, that, that will make this happen. OK. Um, you need to read the input, obviously, as well. OK. So now we're going to talk about um, wall jumping, I guess, looking at the picture. <laughs> so wall jumping is, is pretty much the same thing as we did before. We've got, um, we need to check the collision, but this time we need to look at the x, because we're interested in whether you've hit off the side of something. OK. So this time, we're, we've got two contacts. And we're going to say that if the contacts are above 0.8, then we're going that way. right? And if they're less than 0.8, we're going that way. OK, if you, if you follow that. So if, if we're doing that, we've got a variable called wall jump ready. And we're going to point it in, in that direction. If we're on that side, we'll point it in that direction. OK. Um, and then if you fall off, if you, if you just pull away from the wall, um, wall jump is not going to be ready anymore. Like you can't do wall jumps. So if, if, the, if the value is below a certain amount, wall jump is no longer ready. So then what's going to happen is, as soon as you wall jump, we're just going to add a force. Um, so horizontally, we add a certain amount. And then vertically, we add another amount. And that's just really, like again, sliders. Like This bit is way easier than the normal jumping. You just add a force and like just get the values right you just figure it out <laughs> you can you can do it i i recommend that this is also uh, did i mess something up in this formula yeah like horizontal and vertical the wrong way around cuz i'm an idiot but never mind the um this y vy at the bottom i add on half the jump height so if sorry the jump speed so if you're sliding down the wall then I add half of that onto your jump. So if you're already moving down, you'll kind of already be moving a bit. You'll, you'll jump slower. And if you're moving fast up, you'll jump higher. But only slightly. Like, don't completely take that into account, in my experience. OK. So now we're going to look at something that Meat Boy does. And I think sacrilege, Meat Boy does it wrong. Um, well, actually, it's, it's fine. because OK, so Meat Boy, you're made of meat, right? That's the whole point. Um, so you stick to things because you're meaty. Um, and so that's the whole... And people play my game after coming in Meat Boy and do this thing that's wrong. For my game, at least. Um, so people... If there's a... Okay, so my game's really hard to start. If there's a wall here and there's some horrible thing of death here and you're coming down, you really don't want to touch this or you're going to die. People always do this thing where they, they wait and then they jump away from the wall because Meat Boys program them to have to jump away from walls. 
Because in Meat Boy, if you pull, you, it, you're stuck to the wall for a sec, so it takes a while for you to move away. Um, whereas you can just, look, you can get on and off. There's no reason to stick the player to the wall. The, I don't know if this is why they did it. Maybe it was just a design choice. But one reason I can theorize that they did that is that, okay, you have your controller, you're controlling with the stick, and you do a wall jump. So when you wall jump, say, say I wall jump off that wall, I'm going to press this down, and I'm going to press this down. I press them together, the stick registers before the button does. Okay, because they click at the same time. But this has already moved all that distance before this goes down. So the point is, if you wall jump, you're always going to move away from the wall before you actually jump. So Meat Boy sticks you to the wall so it doesn't make a difference. Uh, my method of doing this is that there's a period where you can jump in mid-air. So oh, I'm messing it up there. Wait, I should really use that screen. So can you see that, that I pulled away from the wall and then I jumped after I'd already left? So you can jump in mid-air slightly. And there's, you can, so I'd add a, a small amount of time, a grace period, where you can still move away from things and jump. And I'd do that for jumping in general as well. So if you walk off an edge, there's a split second where you can jump after you've moved off the edge. And that's especially nice to players. Um, because players mess up, right? People, people misjudge where they can fall, and they, they make mistakes. So I, making it possible to jump after you've left a platform it doesn't make any sense in the real world or physics, but it feels really good. Um, so I'd definitely recommend it. Another thing that, that is important is that if you've got your stick down and you think you're holding right, you're probably not holding right, like... That I might be like one degree off, five degrees off, like anywhere from like zero to sort of five degrees. I, I might be like there or there or there, right? So if you divide your value, so this clamp changes this, so the, the value is always between zero and one. And if you divide it by 0 0.9, then even if your stick is not perfect but slightly off, it will read the value as perfectly right. Because the point is, the player doesn't want to always hold perfectly right. Otherwise, they're going to use the D-pad if they want to go fast. If, if you want the player to use the stick, make it so the stick will always make them go at full speed if, if they want to. So there's all our values. We've, got, we've sort of sorted through all of them now. Um, I'm going to briefly go into why drag is terrible. Um, so moving platforms are the worst thing you will ever try to do and they're a nightmare and they're just awful and hey it's working but man like there, there was a time when I thought that it would never be possible um, and the, the problem is so how we'd solve this in physics is Galilean relativity so if I'm on a train and I'm walking then it's the same as I'm walking on the floor. Even though, even though the train's going, I don't know, 80 miles an hour, I don't know how fast the train goes, 80 miles an hour, that sounds about right. So it, even, even though the train's moving fast, when I walk in the train, I move the same as when I'm walking on the floor. So what you, what you, in real life, what you do is you take the train's velocity, add on your velocity, and then they move together. You cannot do this in a force-based system because you can't add the velocity of that thing onto you. It, I promise you it won't work. <laughs> Lots of people like, get in arguments with me a lot of the time thinking that this works. I, if, if this was possible, I would just do it. You can't, you can't, um, another thing people suggest is that you make your character a child of the thing that's moving. That does not work. N none of this works, I promise you. Um, the, the best way I can see is if you don't use their drag system, you can store your own velocity values and then say, I'll, this, is, this is my sort of hypothetical velocity, this is my real velocity, this is the velocity of the object that I'm standing on, add these together and it makes this. It's, it's a complex problem, very, very complex problem. Um, but I have a hacky solution 
for if you don't want to do that. And my hacky solution is, um, if, you're, if you're barely inputting, then you want to move on the platform. If you, generally, if you're, if you're pressing down, you don't want to move with the platform. You want to move on your own. But if you, if you aren't pressing a button, you want to just be dragged along. So as long as they're not really pressing anything, and their velocity's small, or, that should be an or, not an and, because I'm stupid, but whatever. If, if their velocity is small, or the difference between their velocity and the velocity of the platform is small. So in other words, if the platform's moving this fast, and they're moving this fast, then it snaps them. Or if they're just not moving at all, then it snaps them, as long as they aren't pressing anything. And it, it, it kind of works. I mean, if, you can see he's kind of moving a little bit. Like, if you, if you waited an hour, I'm sure I'd fall off. But most people, like, this, that's near enough, right? <laughs> no one's going to be bothered by that particularly. Um, but this thing is also interesting because... Um, there's, a, there's another nightmare of a problem, and that's um, when you move... So usually in Unity, you might set something's position. When you move something's position, it doesn't collide anymore. So if, if I have a block here, and I teleport it here, which is what you're doing, essentially, that won't collide properly with something else. So you can't move things around by changing their position. That does not work. You have to change their velocity. There is a new function Unity have added recently called like rigid body 2 dmoveposition It doesn't work very well. Like it kind of works, but there's a better solution. Um, and I'm just going to give you this formula and kind of explain it. But there's there's some calculus below that kind of that shows where it's derived from. But you don't want to read that. So <laughs> I just I just just trust me. Okay, this. If, if you take your desired position, okay, so this, these blocks always want to move to this point, for instance. If you take your, the desired position of the block minus its current position, divide it by the time step, and multiply it by what, whatever factor you want, it will move towards there. So if this factor is 1, it will instantly be at that point. If the factor is 0.1, it will go and it'll slide. So that'll be like a smooth... If, if factor's 0.1, you'll get a smooth slide to any point you want. So you can, you can make... At the beginning of the talk, um, you saw the physics balls thing that fired. They, they are using that formula. They're just telling... They're just going back to where they started. Um, so, but there's one problem with that, and that's the floating point error thing again. Uh, when you move your velocity close to a certain value, you're going to go mental. Like, you, if, you, if, you, if you use a system, instead of just going smoothly, it will go like this. And you don't want that. And the way to fix that is to add drag to everything, or make your own drag, but, but that will fix the problem. So basically, th just use that formula. Just put it all over your code, just paste it everywhere. That, that will just make things work. Uh, just tie, my, my, like, the second line I always use, I just copy and paste that everywhere, and then I just do val times equals 0 0.9. If you, if you times it by 0 0.9 afterwards, that will eat up the stupid thing. So these things are not part of, um, they're not attached to anything. This, this circle here, um, it's, it's spinning, and it's spinning four points. And the squares know that they should move to the four points because it feels better to have platforms that are upright than platforms that spin because once they spin, it just doesn't feel good. Like, it's, it doesn't feel good gameplay-wise. So that's why I, I sort of don't use that. So you can kind of see it in action here. Like, this is everything sort of culminating together. But you can see, like, it can, it can glitch out the system. That's why just write your own drag. Don't do what I did. Um, but pretty much, that's like everything you would need to know. And the, the most important bits again: jumping, jumping. Use cos waves, please, and force. Use force controls. Um, but that's yeah, pretty much everything I have to talk about. So if I press X repeatedly, there we go.
Thank you. So um, do all physics in fixed update. Never use update. That's just something I should mention. Never use update. Because you, people do this hacky thing where they do update and find the delta time. But just don't do that. Just Unity has fixed update, and that runs every 0.02 seconds. So it's regardless of frame rate. You should never have frame rate dependent physics. It's just, just bad game design. So even input... Like I don't, I won't even do input in update up, unless it's a menu. Um, the good thing about update is that it runs even if the time is off. So if you want a pause menu, base, um, then what happens is it it like you can just set the time step to zero. Uh, you can set the time step to zero, and your menu will still work if it runs in update. But if you run the physics in update, you'll you screw yourself. So, so fixed like it, it just just use fixed update. <laughs> um, so, like, just always use fixed update. <laughs> but up, update only use for input. Like, uh, so if you if you're using Android development or something, you want all your taps in update because they won't work in fixed update. Um, but really, like input with physics, so when the player presses A, I'd record that in fixed update. But the problem is, um, Unity has a set of functions that check when a button gets pressed down. That does not work in fixed update. You'll have to check it yourself. So you have to, st you sort of had a variable before called X down to show whether the button had been pressed. I can't just check. Like, normally you'd go in input and say, if X is pressed down, don't do that, because then it will not be synced with your physics, it'll be synced with your frame rate. Um, so you'll need, to, you'll need to track the variables, uh, whether they're being pressed down or whether they're being pushed up on your own. But that's not that hard, just have a bool that says, says A is down or B is down, and then that will sort that. But just, um, I, I would only ever use menus in update if at all, but, yeah. Um, wait, wait, the bulls for, like, pressing A down? Yeah. So, should I just open a script? Actually, I don't have it on there. Right, so... Yeah, so... A, um, right, so, so in fixed update, you've... Um, wait, let me just get through the coffins. Do, 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 do. And I need to zoom out. Uh, yeah. Right. So we've got, we've got this variable x down. And that we just declare that at the top of our script. So we say, we, and then at start, we say x isn't down. And then in update, you say, if x is not down and the player presses x, x down is true. And then you say, so then in that bit later, um, zing across to the picture of Rubair, like, in an unfortunate position. Yeah, so when he's about to jump, uh, duh, 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 here, you see that, then we say, if X isn't down and you jump, then do it. So yeah, but th that doesn't require update at all. You can, you can do all of that in fixed update. And please don't use update. <laughs> um, Anyone else? Uh, uh, what happens if you use double precision variables? Does it somewhat fix the jiggly? You um, no, so, I mean, so at, at uni, my physics teacher, well, one of my physics teachers once showed me an interesting thing. He opened up an Excel spreadsheet and, and showed this really simple formula that should always equal one. And then he ran it like 100 times. And by the end, it was like 12 million instead of one. Right, because this, even like, so a float holds, I don't know how many digits, like eight or something, and double is 16 or something like that. So even these small, tiny errors, at 16, like at 1 16th, they'll eventually build up and become huge. Um, doubles don't fix it. 
But on top of that, um, Unity uses floats for all its collision detection and everything, so there's really no point in using doubles ever because, plus you don't really need, like no one needs to know their, their position to a, to a double value. And Unity even stores your positions at uh, single floats, as far as I know. So you, like, it won't even make a difference. So yeah, just drag. <laughs> Um, I could put it up, <laughs> like, yeah, um, so I'm, I'm doing this talk again at develop, which is like, I don't know when that is, but is, but after that, I'm probably gonna, or like at the same time as that, I'll probably like upload at least the video of the talk so you can just look at the code that was in it, but yeah, I could, I, um, let me press this repeatedly until it goes here. If you go on my website, which is alexrosegames.com, there's, it's, there's no such thing now, but like, my game's coming out in a couple of months. So part of the marketing of my game is to th show the physics engine off. So I probably will be doing some blog posts on, on exactly this. But the, like, I've kept some of it as a bit of like secret formula type stuff, especially like the jump mechanic. I kind of, until I was this close to release, I wasn't happy putting out the the jump thing because it's too good, and I didn't want people to have that like and be in competition with me. But now that I'm close enough to release, I know one's getting that out before me, so please don't. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, that's yeah. Like I, I'll I'll put that up. Um, but if not, there's a fun feature of Unity is that when you publish a Unity build. Um, it actually it, it comes with like an, a folder here, um, the data folder, and the assembly is completely in here, and you can you can open it up with a proper reader. And anyone who's ever made a Unity game, you can open up their entire thing and read all their source code. And there's no way to stop that. So if you want to just like get my game and just steal my source code, go for it. Um, <laughs> that's another good way. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Is anyone else? All right. Um. It's a bit of a big, uh, big question, but how would you go about creating your own drag? Creating my own... Oh, drag. Okay, right, right. That's not a big question. Um... What I would do first is I would not have the same X drag and Y drag. Okay, so I'm actually probably about to start... After I finish this, I'm going to do a 3D platformer. And one thing is that... It, 3D platformers wouldn't work in the same way because of drag issues. So how how I do it is store store your X drag and Y drag separately, and then at the either at the start or the end of fixed update on your character controller. So at the bottom of the script or at the top of the script on in fixed update, times your velocity by say 0 0.99 or something, and that that's some way of doing drag. Um, but if you if you multiply the x and y by a different thing, then you'll be able to fix the problem of moving platforms, because you don't really care about the y. If the gravity is high enough that you always drop faster than the thing you're on, you don't care about the y. So you can keep the y drag the same all the time, and that'll mean your jumps are always the same. But if you had your x drag separate, then you could make it that as soon as you go on a platform, drag stops. Because if you didn't have drag and you land on a platform, then you could just set your, you could like put your velocities together and you'd move around together. The, on, the only reason moving platforms don't work is because you've got so much drag on you that the platform below you can't drag you with it because you've got so much air hitting you all the time. Like, oh, I'm in the wind and like the thing's moving without you and it blows out from under your feet essentially. Um, so, yeah, like it, it's not that difficult a problem. Um, you could. You, you can pretty much steal exactly Unity's drag method. And I was doing that recently because I was like, eh, I'll just rewrite my whole drag system the two months before launch, that's fine. Um, but it, the, they seem to do it at a different time. Like, it seems like all your scripts do their thing and then all the collisions happen and then they do the drag. So it's kind of at a place where you can't access. 
so you can't. Um, so it's too late for me now. I'm doomed, and like, <laughs> but it's fine. It doesn't matter. But the uh, like, the, my whole game is designed about around my drag constant, and I've tweaked. Like I've tried to replicate it over and over again with my own drag, and I can't get it just perfect. And if, if it isn't just perfect, the whole game has been designed around this perfect drag system. So it just will break my game. Even by changing it slightly, my game won't be quite the same. So. Um, but it's it's not it's not a hard problem. Just just dr drag really is. You take your velocity, you knock a bit off it, depending on how high it is, um, and that's that's it. So cool. Anyone else? Cool. <laughs> Good.